Hi there Synchro Lovers! Welcome to Synchro Secrets, the go-to place for all things artistic swimming. My name is Agata Andrzejowska and today I have a very exciting topic to talk about, which is artistic swimming routines. And today I will talk about how to choreograph artistic swimming routines with the new rules in mind. So make sure that you watch this video. Also, I wanted to remind you that you should subscribe to this channel so you never miss any of my synchro videos. Choreographing an artistic swimming routine is an art form in itself. The grace, the creativity and the innovation, it all comes together in a mesmerizing display. But with the evolving landscape of our sport, there are new rules to consider. Today, I will be sharing six steps on my choreography process and how to navigate those changes of new rules and to still keep the choreographies interesting for judges and for the people who watch artistic swimming. So let's start with the step number one, which is check the time limits. As we start our artistic swimming choreography, it is very important to first check the time limits. This is our basis. So we have to know the time limits for each age category and how can we develop from there. As you can see, the time limits for solos are different depending on age category and also vary from team time limits. So make sure you always even double check them. Once we know the time limits, which was a pretty straightforward step, let's move on to the step number two, brainstorming with the athletes. This step, of course, depends on the age of the athletes. It is for sure more fruitful and more fun to do it with older athletes, but I always, no matter if it is a team or a solo, I always try to have a, like a brainstorming session with my athletes. And during this session, we can come up with the themes for the routine. We can come up with what kind of music do we want. Should be like be fast paced or should be a little bit slower. Or maybe do we want sharp movements? Do we want more fluid movements or splashy? So we can all talk about this during the brainstorming routine. And of course, we will come up with some ideas. There will be not like defined ideas, but at least we will have a, like a bigger picture of what we want. And after that, we can move from there. And once we come up to a conclusion, we move on to the next step, music search and editing. By the way, I would be very interested in learning about your choreography process. If it looks differently or if it looks similar to mine, leave a comment down below and let me know. Maybe we can have a conversation about that. Selecting the right music, it is not just about finding the music that you like. It obviously goes a little bit more deeper and the music that you pick should like complement the theme, it should have some accents, it should also be age appropriate. For example, I cannot imagine 12 years old or 10 years old swimming to burlesque. So make sure you keep that in mind. And also what is very important that some musics that I noticed like for example at some competitions, in my opinion, they were a little bit too hard for for example 12 years old like too fast paced or too serious or too epic. So make sure that you pick a music that is age appropriate and it goes well with your athletes. Does it complement the athlete? Like does the athlete moves better with slower movements or do they prefer like faster movements? So this is all that you should consider when picking and finding the music. I always listen to the music and try to imagine my swimmers swimming to this routine and if I can imagine them or picture them doing well, this is usually a good sign. Once you find your perfect music, it is time to edit it. Usually there are a lot of different pieces of music that we would like to have in our routine and the worst that can happen to me is when at the editing stage I find out that they actually do not go so well together. Don't get me wrong, I am pretty sure that a professional video editor could make it work. But unfortunately, I am just not there yet when it comes to my music editing skills. Let's say that I am rather average at it. So I really try my best to make those pieces work together. 
and sometimes they just I cannot make them work together it just doesn't work or it sounds weird let's say that I was having the accents one two three four and then for example now all of the sudden it's seven eight or one again and it's all confusing so in my experience it is best to experiment with the software that you are using and obviously practice and you know the more you practice the better you will get like in every skill so practice 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 after that you will start picking up actually what goes well together like how can you make it even work together obviously you can watch some video tutorials as well on that subject and as i said before every skill takes practice so just you know download your music and practice your music editing skills once we have the music ready we can move on to creating the routine so the next step is placement of hybrids technical elements and acro elements when starting choreographing any routine we should first consider what kind of elements are actually required from us is how many hybrids should we put in the routine or what kind of technical elements are there and are there any acro movements or like the partner lifts we will need to check the set number of required elements document which states all the elements and acrobatic movements that each routine has to showcase when we are choreographing technical routines we should also be familiar with the technical elements of each routine once we know all the elements that are required from us we can start placing them in our routine i usually look for accents and like bigger moves to place first like for example acrobatic moves or body boosts or trusts and after that once i picked up all those accents i move on to placing the hybrid in my music and i am doing that by placing the hybrids in the music and like by listening the music i kind of know okay from this time to this time it will be the best to place a hybrid and this actually looks like it's 15 seconds let's let's say after that, I can put some transition, then we have the acrobatic movement. After that, there is a body boost and some arms. And you know, like my kind of way of thinking goes from those big movements and accents till like starting again from the beginning of the routine and listening to the whole music and having this in my mind and trying to place the hybrids because we have a specific number of hybrids that we have to place i like to know in advance where are the hybrids gonna be like i want to know how much time i have because sometimes i also notice that some coaches do not plan it this way and then they run into troubles that actually they don't have enough time for all the hybrids and then they have to go back and then they have to change everything and it's just too much it's better to plan at the beginning and then you have this peace of mind that you are going to have all the required elements there. Of course, during that process, I write all the timings down so I can come back to it at any time or change the timing if necessary. And once I am done with the hybrids and elements placement, I watch some synchro routines on YouTube or a dance routine with a particular theme in mind for some inspiration at first. And then I try to come up with my movements. And by watching the YouTube inspirations or dance performances or even a movie that actually aligns with the theme of my routine, then I can actually be, I feel like I am more creative that way. Sometimes I even kind of copy the moves, sometimes I adapt them to the routine, and sometimes I just come up with extremely new moves uh, and like uh, kind of creative moves. And I try to place them, I try to remember them. Now, if I cannot remember them, then obviously I have to record myself. And when I, for example, choreograph the team routine, I try to do it with the counts. And obviously this is a little bit harder and tricky to remember all the counts and what everyone is doing. So obviously I just either remember all the counts or I video myself or I write them down on a piece of paper, actually videoing was working best for me so far because it's fast and I don't have to write down anything and obviously I can watch them as many times as I have to and I can double check the counts I can always change the counts and when it comes for example to positioning the pattern obviously I sit down with different colors of pencils and I just 
draw them out with different colors so I know where each swimmer goes and of course when it comes to traveling during the routine I also like draw a pool and then I make some kind of notes where the routine is gonna go and I am doing it with arrows like for example I put the hybrid one then I make an arrow hybrid two and I make another arrow so I know where the hybrids should be performed in the pool and I also know how the swimmer has to travel after the hybrid or during the hybrid which is also an important part because now with the new rules we are getting a bonus for traveling. Now once we planned our routine we can move on to step number five which is working with the athletes. Now once I plan out my routine and with the, all the counts and kind of I know what I want to do it is time to try it with the athletes. It is important to note that not every move that I planned or transition will work the way I actually had it in my head because for example the athlete just cannot do it or for example in my head it looked nicer and it is important to stay open-minded and be ready to change the movements at any time. Being flexible in this step is very important so once you plan out all your routine, do not stick it to it so hard. Make sure that it works for your athlete. If it looks bad, just change it and you can change it with the athlete and see straight away. Does it look good? If yes, then it's perfect, right? So stay flexible. And for me, it was always important that the athletes were involved in the creation process. That's why I like to ask the athletes to come up with certain moves that would fit the music in their opinion and usually I end up using some of their ideas in the routine that we are creating. Even if those ideas are a little bit modified, the athletes would feel like they are contributed to the creation process and would hopefully be more motivated to swim and work on the choreography for the whole season. Once we settle on the hybrid movements, I always compare it to the difficulty table. Note specific movements down and calculate the final difficulty score for this hybrid. If the difficulty is too low in my opinion and I feel like my athletes can do more, I add some movements or exchange the moves I already created for the ones that are higher on the difficulty document. Once we tried the choreography with the athletes and it all worked, it is time for step number six, coach card declaration. Let's not forget that the new rules require all the coaches to fill out a coach's card before each competition. In this document, you have to specify all the technical elements, all the acrobatic movements, hybrids and transitions that your athletes are going to perform. Luckily, this process should be easy for you since you already wrote all the hybrids down and you already noted the timing of transitions, of hybrids. Now you just have to fill out the acro codes or the duet lift codes and you are ready to go. Quite easy, right? I know it has been a short video about choreography and there is way more things to cover. If you have any more questions regarding this topic, make sure you comment in the comment section and I will read it and either reply it or I will make another video and cover this particular question in much more detail. And if you still feel like you need some help in choreographing, just make sure that you drop me a message because I actually choreograph solo and duet routines online. So I am ready to help you. Just don't hesitate to ask. And there you have it, my six step process to choreographing synchro routines with the new rules. I hope you enjoyed this content, I hope you enjoyed this video and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me some thumbs up and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!